The monster of Elizabeth Lake. Find Elizabeth. One of the multiple Elizabeth Lake locations throughout California is said to carry an evil presence below the water surface. The Elizabeth Lake just outside of Lancaster in LA is said to have been created by the devil himself for the keeping of his hellish pets. Okay, that's an interesting place to keep your pets. The urban legend continues to state that a passageway to hell can be found if you swim deep into the lake. Yeah, I can't hold my breath that long, so I don't think I'll find it. But anyways, what's up guys? Thanks so much for coming back for another creepy video. As always, don't forget to subscribe, be a part of the Socially Awkward family, and follow me on Instagram. Links are down below. And give this video a like and a share. But yeah, today we are going to be looking at some scary California urban legends. And I think we're ready, so let's get creepy. The first sighting of the monster of Elizabeth Lake dates back all the way to 1880. The monster is said to have the neck of a giraffe, head of a bulldog, bat wings, an estimated 50 feet long, and smells of rancid decay. For the next century, sightings of the monster would continue to be reported and strike fear into the locals' hearts. The locals would be so scared that landowners would actually sell or completely abandon their property. Also, attempts to build on the lake's land came to no avail. At night, residents could hear awful screams from the lake and would have terrible visions. Farm animals would disappear and sightings of a flying winged creature was reported to be seen overhead. Ranchers in the 1800s have even tried to capture the beast, with one of the legends saying that a group of them did in fact kill the monster. However, any proof of the creature's existence or death has yet to be discovered. Well, just go fishing at a different lake, cause that sounds creepy. The Dark Watchers. Why are they dark, huh, racist? This legend takes us to the Santa Lucia Mountains, which run from Avila Beach to Monterey. The Dark Watchers are said to be giant, humanesque phantoms that lurk inside these eerie mountains. Legend goes that the Dark Watchers can only be seen at twilight as they stand at the Santa Lucia Mountains tops. They've only been claimed to be seen staring out into the vast space below the mountains before completely vanishing. These ghostly figures first emerged in Chumash Indians' history and lore. The cave walls were donned with drawings by the Chumash that depicted these phantoms. The Dark Watchers made an appearance in author John Steinbeck's story, Flight, where these creatures were described as dark forms against the sky. More recent sightings came in the 1960s by a Monterey High School principal. Now the legend of the Dark Watchers has evolved to human-like ghosts wearing dark capes and hats. Well, at least they wear clothes and they're not running around naked. Cause it's cold up there in the mountains. <laughs> Turnball Canyon Hauntings. Ooh, I love a good haunting. Death is said to reside within this hiking canyon in the Puente Hills Preserve near Whittier. <laughs> Turnball Canyon was once referred by the Gabrielino Indians as Hutagna. I can't say that, or the place of the devil. That's much easier to say. The legend talks about the whole region being haunted by the Indians who were murdered for not converting to Catholicism. Their spirits are believed to be lingering in unrest in the canyon. Years later, Turnball Canyon would be the site of numerous satanic rituals held by a cult attempting to conjure demons and Satan himself, often by sacrificing children from the nearby orphanages. What? I think that part is real, actually. The sinister cult suddenly vanished one night. What was left behind in their wake were paranormal sightings and occurrences being reported by hikers and locals, claiming to see hooded figures, hellish creatures, and mutilated children. More mysterious deaths have occurred in Turball Canyon since its dark history began. A teenager was electrocuted by exploring the ruins of an old asylum in the canyon, and a plane also crashed here in 1978, taking 29 lives. That is crazy! I mean, there are so many places to hike, just go somewhere else. The Hollywood Sign Spirit. Ooh, I heard of that one. That's why I never go there. Not because I don't exercise and I don't want to hike. It's like a four hour hike. <laughs> Probably one of the most inf infamous urban legends in California, the sign is said to be haunted by early 1900s actress Peg Entwistle. When a possibly career-ending review was published about one of her films, she climbed to the top of the sign's H and threw herself. She is now called the Lady in White and is said to haunt the sign and the surrounding area. The legend continues to state that the Lady in White will appear to people hiking to the off-limits part of the sign where she had killed herself. 
Instead of the beautiful Hollywood actress, what appears to these unfortunate people is a woman with a skeletal face and deep hollowed out eyes. If those hikers are alone, the lady in white somehow influences them to share her own cruel fate. Many Hollywood signed suicides have been reported in the century following her suicide. In 2012, a man's decapitated head and mutilated body parts were found right by where she killed herself. So don't go by that sign. That's not fun. The Griffith Park Curse. People say that Griffith Park is haunted by an old curse. The land once belonged to Spanish soldier Jose Vicente Files. I probably butchered that, I'm sorry. Given to him by a Spanish land grant. After his death, the land passed to Maria Ignacia Vertigo, who had wed one of Fila's sons, and then it passed to her son, Don Antonio Fila's. <laughs> it is alleged that Don Antonio's friend, Antonio, tricked Don into leaving him the land as Fila's lay on his deathbed. As a result, Fila's teenage niece, Pretra... Oh my god, there's so many complicated names. It is said that his teenage niece cursed the land, saying a blight shall fall upon the face of his terrestrial paradise. The cattle shall no longer fatten but sicken on its pastures. The fields shall no longer respond to the toil of the tiller. The grand oaks shall wither and die. The wrath of heaven and the vengeance of hell shall fall upon this place. So you don't want to move into that apartment. Yeah, I don't don't ever want to go to Br Griffith Park. The Fresno Nightcrawler. In the late 90s and early 2000s, reports of a strange cryptid walking around Fresno, California at night began popping up. Evidence was patchy at best. However, in 2007, surveillance footage revealed a biped with two long legs and a small head walking through a Fresno resident's front yard. The sci-fi network show that even included the Fresno Nightcrawler in one of their episodes, and the footage was deemed unexplainable. And that is what they're supposed to look like. Looks nasty. Go back to whatever planet you came from. You was gross and kind of creepy. <laughs> Dang, if there were a bunch of those, I would just be like, hey, you look like a turkey wishbone. Can I crack your legs? The Billowack Monster. <laughs> Rumors of an alleged beast have been swirling since the 1940s at the site of the former Billowack Dairy in Ventura County. August Rubel, a German national living in the United States during World War II, owned the dairy. It was rumored that Rubel had a secret underground lab beneath the dairy where he was working with the U.S. government to build a super soldier for warfare. What, the Terminator? He returned to his native Germany in 1943, a dangerous journey, as he was supposedly working for the Allies. During the trip, Rubel was allegedly killed by a German landmine. Years later, reports of a strange creature roaming the area where the now abandoned dairy stood started to surface. Many of these reports came from local high school students who told police that a large humanoid with goat-like horns and sharp claws was hurling rocks at their car. In 1964, hikers reported that they were terrorized by a creature fitting the description of the Billowack monster. Sounds like some kid was just throwing rocks at your car and messing with some hikers, but still, not taking a chance. The Ghost of Stowe Lake. San Francisco's Golden Gate Park is home to one of the city's most famous ghosts. Stowe Lake is said to be haunted by a spirit of a woman who after attempting to save her child who fell in the water, drowned in the lake. Legend goes that this woman, referred to as the White Lady, how many white ladies are there, dang, <laughs> wanders the edges of Stowe Lake as she searches for her baby. She can even be summoned by visitors. It's said that the most active area surrounding the lake is near the Pioneer Woman and Children's Statue. Brave ghost seekers can summon the woman by calling out, White Lady, White Lady, I have your baby, three times. If she believes you, the woman will appear before you and will ask for her baby back. The legend bewares both skeptics and believers from doing this. For if you tell her you have her baby, the woman will haunt you the rest of your life. If you tell the woman you don't have her baby after summoning her, legend says she will drag you into Stowe Lake and give you the same watery death she suffered. Yeah, because you told her you had her kid and then you lied, so now she's gonna kill you. See guys, don't do this white people stuff, okay? Only white people investigate. Don't investigate. 
Hashtag it. And that's it for scary California urban legends. So just don't go outside at all. Don't try to summon demons and you'll be fine. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. Again, don't forget to subscribe, be a part of the Socially Awkward family, and follow me on Instagram. Links are down below. And give this video a like and a share. But yeah, that's it. So I will see you scary people next time. Thank you.